Hello, everybody. Welcome to Room 442. Albert Vartanian, James Sharman, Sarah Peraria. Bear with us on this show. This is a last-minute show we just put together because of our madman boss. <laughs> but enough of that. We have three blocks on this show that are all pretty much the same, but with different names. I promise you're going to enjoy it. This one is all about overreactions. I've compiled a list of some overreactions. I'm going to get my match, James and Sarah, to react to them. Mm -hmm. So let's start. Mikhailo Mudrik. The talk of the Premier League is already Chelsea's best player. <laughs> oh, Charles. I love that hot take. Because one game in, he has to be, right? One game in, the 21-year-old raw product has to be the best player. The GOAT. Let's talk about him being the GOAT. <laughs> yeah, don't want that <laughs> Why not? You know, forget about Chelsea's best player. No, listen, he's going to be a really, really good player. Debbie was great so far. Yeah. But uh, let's give him some time, shall we? There's some pretty good players in that team. Um, who is their best player, though? That's I'm what I'm saying. Starting a I mean... Thiago Silva. Probably Thiago Silva. I was about to say that's that. That's saying a lot. He's got the most storied career, for sure. Mm -hmm. Right now, is he the best? A guy in his late 30s, a center back? I think maybe Reese James when he's healthy. Right. But are we looking at all their injuries, or are we looking at who no, they just, had in I mean, their starting a... 11 that day? Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. I mean... Let's narrow it down, then, Sarah, to Chelsea attackers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Raheem Sterling's got the money. Raheem Sterling, Kai Havertz, Ziyech. Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, Hakim Ziyech, who hasn't been that great, right? For it's Chelsea? probably Havertz, isn't it? At this point, Wait, if you huh? had to make a, a, a ruling now, out of the strikers, who's the best? Who would you pick for for Barcelona? Huh. Barcelona's signing one player. I mean, I know Aubameyang's probably going back yeah. there. Anyway, out of the Chelsea but, players, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Who would you He's sign? The worst. I mean, I think I'd rather take Raheem Sterling when he's healthy over Ziyech. Yeah. Havertz, sorry. I'm a big fan of Kai Havertz. He's a big game player. He mm -hmm. really is. He scores in big games, but every other game he doesn't score, so it's a problem. I'm going to go Mudrik, best player on Chelsea right now. <laughs> Next one, this one I go right to you, James. Arsenal is a better fit for Jude Bellingham than <gasps> Liverpool or City. Uh, <laughs> it's a good hot take, but they're going to sign Declan Rice. They don't want Bellingham, right? That's the hot <laughs> rumor right now. Right. That's the hot take. Um, yeah, of course, right now, is it a the best fit. Well, they're a better team than Liverpool. They're a younger team than Liverpool. But Liverpool have a big gaping hole in their midfield that would be filled by Jude Bellingham beautifully. Um, of course not. I can't be saying that. I'm a Liverpool fan, right? So what do you want me to say? I actually think, right, like what James said, like Liverpool needs help in the middle. And Arsenal right now in the middle are fantastic. I don't know. I, not to say that adding Jude Bellingham would take away from those other players, but maybe it would. Maybe it shift some of that you know, what's the word I'm looking for? When um, they work um, together. Oh, yeah, that's... Um, Cohesiveness? Work, work togetherness. <laughs> work togetherness. I yeah. just think that there's so much more work to do at Liverpool than Arsenal. If Arsenal go on to win the Premier League, you're going to assume that moving forward, they're going to spend and spend and spend and try and build into some sort of dynasty. Why? Because Arsenal do that traditionally? They don't do no. that. They, don't, they never spend. Yeah, that's right. But if you want to change the way the team has been operating, this is the best time to probably do it. And they're willing to spend. They have the money. So who does he replace? What's the, that midfield I don't know if he necessarily replaces anybody. Well, he, he would definitely to. go alongside Partey and, and Odegaard. Odegaard. That's a pretty good midfield. It's a pretty good and, midfield. And putting Bellingham in there, that's pretty well balanced as well. Yeah. You have your holder in Partey, you have your creator in Odegaard, and Bellingham is box to box. He could be the new Alex Song. Oh, right. Alex right. West Ham legend, Alex. Absolutely. Right. Legend, Alex. Oh, yeah, Barca. <laughs> he'll, fit, the thing is, he'll fit anywhere, though. He'll fit anywhere. In any I, team. That's, I don't want him to go to is. Arsenal, but he fits well at Arsenal. Uh, next one, continue with Arsenal. Selling Jesus and Zinchenko to Arsenal will cost Pep Guardiola the league. Woo! Uh, I mean, it already kind of has, but I wouldn't say it's simply because of Jesus and Zinchenko. Zinchenko has been... Fantastic. Jesus was great until he got mm -hmm. injured, but I think this is more of a, the collection of players that Arteta has put together here and Arteta himself. I can't, you can't just say. Okay. But hind hindsight two. being 2020, thinking back on that, that's a horrible move by Manchester City to Absolutely. sell both of them. Well, it depends because they got Haaland to replace Jesus. Totally. Essentially, right? right? Who's turned out pretty good so far. Now, we debated in yesterday's show. Are they better with or without Haaland, right? And the bottom line is, long term, that they're better off with him, mm -hmm. I think, right? With Haaland? With Haaland. Yeah, yeah I hate yeah, that right. narrative. It doesn't know, make any but, sense. I, know, I think it's interesting. I think it can be debated. Right. But I still think Haaland's a, you know, he's going to be there for a long time. He'll score many, many goals. Yeah. Um, so I think 
like Sarah said, I think Arsenal are the reason why Pep's losing the title this year. Right. They've been so great and they've made this huge step forward that we didn't really see coming. But I also think that at the time that Jesus and Zinchenko went to Arsenal, Arsenal weren't looked at as direct rivals to City. Yeah, that's this is fair. A, this is true. very surprising, that's right? That's true. So at the time, Takea let them go. Like Arsenal, so he wouldn't have sold them to a couple more years. Liverpool, for example. He wouldn't no, have said that. No, I don't think so. At the time, that were the big rivals. I don't th- he wouldn't have sold them to Man United, clearly. Liverpool, because Liverpool was the next thing. No one saw this coming from Arsenal. So Arteta he, he, was... He, he underestimated Arteta. Arteta was... How close was he getting sacked? This time last year. That's right. what we were talking about on, on not 4-4-2 yeah. back then, but on the parlay back mm-hmm. then. You and I were talking about it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be gone. He's going to be fired. Yeah, and back to that Holland thing. I hate that nerve. The guy... He's got 25 goals. And if you look at comparisons from this season to last season, it's the defense that's holding them back, not Erling Holland. Uh, Sadio Mane was Liverpool's best player during the Klopp era. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Ooh. Look at what has happened to this side without him. He was the glue. He was everything to this team. We've seen Mo Salah, nothing. Actually, apparently Mo Salah might be out the door now, is the, the latest rumor I'm hearing. Any of the new guys coming in, Diogo Jota, Luis Diaz, <laughs> Darwin Nunez, all of them haven't really fit since they've came in. I mean, the midfield as well have been tragic. I mean, and I'm talking about people that I love in Thiago Alcantara, but like... Yeah, and, but the question is, was he the best player in the club era, right? Up until now, Of course. Right? He, well, I think, I think he Virgil was. Virgil van Dijk may have something to say mm. about that, don't you think? Allison might have something to say about that. This no, money was the best attacking player. I think that's fair to say. I yeah, would say yeah. better than Salah because Salah was all goals. Yeah. Although this Salah in his prime was freaking amazing. Yeah, I go. I'll go with Virgil Van Dijk. Maybe the overreaction overreaction should have been Mane was actually a more important player than Mohamed Salah. Yeah, well, I think era. that's arguable. I mean, everything is it's, arguable, but we have everything. Yeah. Except for, of course, the Holland. Uh, isn't yeah, it? you can't yeah. argue that. Yeah. Uh, if Harry <laughs> Kane was at Manchester City, Sarah, he'd be scoring as many goals as Holland. Ooh, yeah. that's, that's a good hot take. That one. I'd say so. I mean, look at how the service Holland's getting. And we know Harry Kane can score goals. He's second in the league right now, right? I 15 mean, goals with Spurs with no service. Imagine yeah, exactly. I mean, he has a bunch of dead weight behind him. So if you put him hey, on an actual yeah, yeah, defense yeah. team, he'll probably Spurs do even getting better. Spurs destroyed on 4-4-2 the past yeah, couple of no, days. Yeah, no, but definitely. no, think about think? it. Oh, that's a really good one. I love Harry Kane. I think he's an absolute legend. Um, so, yeah, why not? Um, they, they tried to sign Kane before Haaland, don't forget. Mm-hmm. So, Pep knew how to use him you would mm-hmm. think um but Holland, and you know what honestly what Holland's doing is is so we've never seen it before in english football so maybe it's a bit of a stretch to say that Kane would do the same maybe he would but he'd score a ton of goals right he'd be 35 plus for sure but right now Holland's on course for what 57 <laughs> premier league that's, goals. That's, that's messy numbers i know it's ridiculous Stupid. numbers i wanted to get to one more we have no time <laughs> coming up next it's the worst game show in 4-4-2 this week. <laughs> it's red card, yellow card, play on. Mikey, Mikey Singh will be in the host chair. So please stay tuned for that. Welcome back inside room 442. Alba Vartanian, Sarah Peraria, and it's time for everybody's favorite game. <laughs> it's red card, yellow card, play on. So if you're new, just watching this, I'm going to say a statement. If they totally agree with my statement, they're going to show me nothing. It's play on. But if they totally disagree with my statement, they're going to show me a red card, send me off. If they kind of agree, I'm treading some, some water there. They're going to show me a yellow card, a caution me. <laughs> so let's get into it. You'll see how this works. Albert, I'm going to throw to you first. Let's do it. We saw over the weekend Marcus Rashford and Bukayo Saka go head-to-head, score some similar goals. I'm going to say Marcus Rashford is better than Bukayo Saka. Oh. Yellow card. Mm. Yellow oh, card. That's a cop I know. I'm on the fence. <laughs> because th- right now... I think along with Harry Kane, those three are definitely the best three English players in the Premier League. But based on form, I think Saka and Rashford are the best, along with Holland. It's hard to say, man. It's tough. That is tough, Okay, let me throw some stats for you. Marcus Rashford this season, 28 matches, 17 goals. Yeah. Bukayo Saka, about the same amount of matches, 8 goals. 
does that change your mind a little bit? Does it sway yeah, I think, you at all? You know what? I think Rashford is, is more important to his team than Saka mm. because Saka on Arsenal is not the only one who needs to provide the goals. Correct. When you look at United, without Rashford, they're not in that same position. What was that stat you told us, Hoog? The second leading but, but scorer you... this season is Anthony. Yeah. He has, three. I believe, three in Premier League, yeah. five in all competitions. Yeah. I'm going to stick with the yellow card because I think he can go either way. But mm. I will slight edge towards Rashford. Love to hear it. Sarah Praria, this one's for you. And I'm shocked to see them in this position. But Everton are in a relegation battle hmm. now. They just sack Frank Lampard, Lampard, and we've seen kind of what can happen when you bring in a new manager. So I'm going to say Everton are going to avoid relegation this season. They're currently on 15 points from 20 games, two points back of that safety zone. Do you think they do it? Oh, uh, you know what? I'm not going to cop out like Albert and give a yellow. I'll go it's straight the red. They're I'll getting relegated. Straight. I think they are because just before we got into the studio, actually, James had mentioned that apparently now Everton are for sale. Mm -hmm. So it seems like it's not just at the coaching level they're okay. having issues. The entire club seems to be in shambles. And a lot of the time you get that new ownership. It takes time for them to get their feet kind of settled in. I'm not sure. And they are, they're at the bottom. I know there's like the, uh, the last like five. They're all kind of hovering really around close. the same. But their football's been bad and it kind of just seems like what's going on behind closed doors it does not look good for Everton they need to get their their signing of the manager correct yes because if they I know Marcelo Bielsa is, is high up high. there if they hire him that's a huge mistake because he was leading leads to relegation you can't bring him in to keep them up it needs to be a proper manager who knows what he's doing no knock to Bielsa but in this situation you need someone who's been there before Sean Dyche Sean Dyche well you know we don't do too much Everton content on this show. No. Honestly, they haven't really deserved it, but I'm going to double down here. Whoop. Another piece of Everton content here. Albert, I'm saying Spurs back line <laughs> oh, yeah. is worse than Everton's back line. No, it's not, clearly. You just show me a red card? I'm going to go red card. I do like a lot of the players there. I'm a huge fan of Tarkowski. I'm a huge fan of Carter Cody. I thought Everton actually did fantastic business, right? Those mm. two both came on a free transfer, right? But when you look at uh, the goals against, and I hope I'm not wrong here, but I'm pretty sure Tottenham have a better goals against. No way. No, they don't. No. That, this was what you said Tottenham yesterday. Tottenham have conceded more goals this season oh than Everton there goes in my, the Premier League. There goes my League. entire argument. Tottenham have a World Cup uh, winner in there. And Chris Romero, there yes. Go. But, I mean, collective... Is it top, top three center back in the Premier League? Is Chris that what Romero. you were saying? It's fantastic. <laughs> Get Argent. out of here. Sound hate me. But uh, collectively... <laughs> Uh, no, a red card. Go ahead. Oh, I don't know about that. Okay, Sarah Peraria, this one's for you. It's kind of similar to last segment where Albert was touching on uh, Erling Holland, And I'm going to say if Robert Lewandowski played for Manchester City, he would have as many goals as Erling Holland. Ooh, oh, you know what? Let me, let me throw some stats yeah, out to you. Yeah, let's do right? that. Robert Lewandowski this season in all competitions for Barcelona, 22 goals. Sorry. Erling Holland. All competitions for Manchester City, 31 goals. The 25 okay, in the, the league. Okay, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the yellow. And I'm only the only reason I would say maybe not is because of his age. That's yeah. the only thing. Because like you said, he's scoring goals for Barcelona, and it's similar to Manchester United situation with Rashford. After that, the drop, I think it might be Dembele has like eight. I think it's it's a big drop. So, yeah. you know, most of the goals are coming from Lewandowski. You have an occasional Dembele, Pedri, whomever. But he definitely can score the goals. We know that. He's done it at Munich. He's done it at Barca. Mm -hmm. but, and he would get the service at City. That's the Probably thing. better service. But, but, but we have to remember his age. Can he do it as well as Holland with that pace? Oh. I, I want to say, yeah, but Holland, how old is Holland? 22? And he's, 22, what, 30, yeah. 34? Yeah, so... But you know what? The majority of Holland's goals come in the 18-yard box. That's yeah. what Lewandowski scores his goals, too. Yeah. I think it'd be pretty close, it, I think it'd be close. 25 is Holland a stretch. That's, That's why ridiculous. I went the yellow, the yellow. But he, yeah, he'd be up there. Yeah, Robert Lewandowski, he deserves more respect for what yeah. he's doing. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, let's shift things over. We haven't done this in a while, but the season's right around the corner. We got to. We got to talk some Toronto FC. Sarah Fry, I'm going to throw this back to you. Federico Bernadeschi will score more goals 
than Lorenzo Insigne this season. Last season, just for context, Bernadeschi had eight goals, but five of those goals were from the PK spot. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Insigne had six goals in all competitions. Last year, if you don't remember, I said Federico Bernadeschi was a better player than Lorenzo Insigne, and he would be more important to TFC. And was he? He absolutely was. He's going to do it again, too. Plus, Lorenzo Insigne, it seems like he's bringing some drama to the team. He's older, a bit of this attitude. I don't know. Bernadeschi, for sure, is more important to TFC. He's going to score more goals. Absolutely. No question. I think a lot of it is going to come down to actually who takes those spot kicks, right? Because as we remember, Insigne was going to be the guy who took the spot kicks. He missed his mm -hmm. first one, and Bernadeschi That's took it. over, That's right? It. That's, That's, gonna be that, the That's the decider for me. Yeah. If Bernadeschi's on PKs, he's got it. But if they're both clicking on the same page this season, Watch Toronto out. FC could have one of the Watch best out, attacks in Major League Soccer. Full preseason under their belt this time. Albert, if Toronto FC played in the EFL Championship, mm -hmm. they would not be relegated. Oh, man. Based off of last season? <laughs> no, just now. Like, going into this I'm go, season. So I'm going to go based off of last season. I'm going to say red card. They wouldn't be relegated. <laughs> yeah. They would have been relegated they to MLS were, last I season. I know. That's what I'm saying. They'd be, they were leaking goals like crazy. Now, going into this next season, if they make the acquisition of getting Sean Johnson, maybe another defender, another midfielder, it's a different story. But mm -hmm. listen, the championship, yeah, it's a tier below the Premier League. But that's a different beast. Mm. There's some very good teams on that side. Look at teams that come up, like Brentford, you know, Nottingham Forest. I mean, Forest not having the best season, but they're still a very strong team to be out of the relegation zone. Can TFC beat a team like Forest? I don't think so. Yeah, you know, we saw Richie Larea go over, and he didn't do as well as maybe we would have thought, but that's okay. So we're out of time here on, uh, at least for this segment on Room yes. 442. Coming up next, Attack and Defend. James Sherman is back. Welcome back to the show that never ends. Uh, Shaman back here with you. Albert's gone. Sarah and Mikey are still here with you. Uh, now for the, the best segment of the show. We just did red card, yellow card. No, uh, now for the best segment of the show. <laughs> Attack the fan, the, uh, the OG from the, uh, the, the game OG. show games we have on this wonderful show of room 442. So here we go. I've got four or five here for you. Um, let's start with this one. Uh, next year's Euros will be more exciting than last year's World Cup. Mikey, uh, defend that. Yeah, it will be more exciting than last year's World Cup. The reason being, Italy was not <laughs> in the World Cup last year. The defending <laughs> European champions was not in the World Cup. And hey, we are a Canadian-based show. There's some prominent Italians that play in Toronto that we did not get to witness at the World Cup. And now we're here sitting in Toronto. Right. We're going to be covering the European Championships. Italy's going to be there. We're going to be talking about Insigne. We're going to be talking about Bernadeschi. Will they be there? They'll be there. They'll be there for yeah. sure, man. Come on. For you sure? got to give them that respect. Ask Seba Javinko that question. <laughs> right? Fair, but Seba Javinko is not Lorenzo Insigne and Federico Bernadeschi. Ooh, now that's a hot take. That'd be a good one. I don't think so. Not that hot. They're, these guys are European champions. They, no, they've been there. They've done that. I'm just saying what Seba did in MLS. Okay, I'm not attacking, defending. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go. I'll watch. All right, sorry. All right, sorry. Um, attack that. Not a hope in hell that the Euros will be more exciting. First of all, this World Cup was in November. Whether you liked it or not, that caused some excitement. It was different. It gave us something to look forward to earlier in the year or I guess later, but it was it was different. It caused excitement. We saw Leo Messi win a World Cup. And again, whether you like that or not, that was a very fairy tale ending for a player that we've all watched for so long and somewhat deserved some sort of international trophy on that level. And thirdly, Mikey Singh's favorite, Canada was in this World Cup after how long? <laughs> you can't good. argue it. I know you can't. Dude, you Thanks set me up for that one. I want to mention one thing. You know, Harry Kane, you know, England's Messi. Um, you know, looking for his first trophy as well. That's, a, that's a really big storyline. Also, Sarah <laughs> loves Qatar. Yes, yeah, suddenly. Sarah loves suddenly Qatar. No. I'll, I'll, give, I'll <laughs> give Sarah the points there. The Canada angle was pretty good. Was pretty Nailed good. it. Used it against you. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, the Saudi League will be bigger than MLS within five years. Sarah, attack that. Oh, no. uh, so I'm, I'm saying... MLS will still be bigger. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I mean, look at the growth of <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> okay, no, I'm going to be serious. Look at how much MLS has grown. Even Toronto FC, we've seen big guys. I mean, Javinko was already here, but now Insigne and Bernadeschi. We've seen Gareth Bale come over. Beckham owns a team, and look at what could that be in five years. The potential for this is incredible, and I get it. Ronaldo went to the Saudi League, but he's on his way out, whereas we're seeing players come younger and younger to MLS, and I think that just allows it to, to it become more competitive. And she's, she's coming over to the dark side, Maggie, I think. There. Uh, that's, 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 that? There's some heart behind that, and I hate to break her heart with this argument, <laughs> but unfortunately, money talks, and right now, nobody in the world has more money than Saudi Arabia. Not only have we seen Cristiano Ronaldo go over to this league, but there were others before him, prominent players who are now applying their trade in Saudi Arabia. And I'm thinking about this in the first year, Think about where this will be in the next five years when you have Ronaldo, who is now the figurehead of this league, attracting more and more players. Share of hands. How many of you watched the Saudi League before Cristiano Ronaldo? Sorry, how up? many of us do watch it <laughs> with Ronaldo? Yeah. Wait, the question well, should well, be no, how? But you guys watched, tuned in, and saw, actually, you tuned in, and you <laughs> saw... PSG versus... I tuned in for PSG, not for Al Nasser. Oh, That's why yeah, I didn't watch you them. Because watch every you single did. PSG I match. Watch, I watch a lot of PSG matches, I will say. Because did you Messi. watch their last match? The five, the six, the eight. Yeah, yeah did you watch that? No, because no, Messi. Get out of here. <laughs> I only watch PSG for Messi, I'll be honest. But none, none of us watched Al Nasser when Ronaldo played and didn't do anything. I'm going to give Sarah this one again, and you don't mind that, do you? But, but good arguments, regardless. All right, Gianni Infantino. <laughs> is the most likable sporting exec in the world. Here's a picture, by the way, in the background with, with Vladimir Putin. Um, Mikey, to defend that, he is the most likable sporting exec in the world. <laughs> yes, you know, he is the most likable sporting exec in the world. When you look at other sporting execs in other sports, Rob Manfred, in MLB, he had a shoe that was thrown at him not that long ago. A guy who locks people out. Have you ever heard of a lockout in soccer? That just doesn't happen. Gary Bettman, he is notorious for getting booed every time he shows his face in any sort of public setting. <laughs> Listen, there's a lot. Goodell, another guy who's notorious for being booed all the time. Come on, when you're comparing this guy to those guys, I don't know. Right, I don't Sarah. know. I don't Attack know. <laughs> yeah, today I feel greedy, like Albert has said. This Connecting is the biggest the fraud. <laughs> we know him as the biggest fraud. Only cares about money. He had a World Cup in November, for goodness sakes. This that you said is, was great. This is not the same argument. We got to switch. <laughs> We're about to die. She sits for it's convenient. Exactly. Hey. No. <laughs> No, but come on, we know how much this guy just focuses on money. Look at how much these players have been playing football over the last three years. He doesn't care about the well-being of players. He wants money, and we know that, and I'm sick of it. You can make Ma the Mikey argument. was uh, answering the indefensible there, but I'm going to give Mikey the <laughs> points there. Very well done. Very, very quickly, right? 30 seconds left. Gareth Bale will be better known for golf than he is for soccer in a couple of years' time. Okay, defend that one. Sarah. He's going to be better. At, yeah, of course. He, he has so much time. Golfers play until they're nearly 100. He's he's halfway there already. He loves the game more than... He's already said he's love, he loves golf more than football. So that's a good start. He's, what, 35? And he's already playing in this pro-am thing? I'm lucky. Um, will he be better known for golf than soccer in a couple of years' time? No. No. <laughs> what? No. Come on. The guy has... So many accolades to his name. We know Gareth Bale for football. We'll always know Gareth Bale for football. And his golf game probably isn't that great. So, no. I like the fact that Sarah made fun of golfers. And I like making fun of golfers. <laughs> yeah, so I'll give you the fair. points there as well. All right. I don't know what today show was. <laughs> but you know what? We'll do it again because it's a lot of fun, actually. I really quite enjoyed it. So, uh, to, our, to our big boss in, in, in the sky there, in the ivory towers of uh, Tom Stan Sports, <laughs> thank you. Great idea. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.